Hey there folks and welcome to this video, this one here is a general notice. Uh, for those of you unaware, what that content is on this channel, it's where I talk about the week going ahead, I look a bit back, and I also talk about something that's on my mind. If you're looking for that thing, which is the title of this video, you can find a link in the description down below to skip to that point. But yeah, um, for this week it's going to be a bit similar to last week in that I'm not going to be doing much streaming over the weekend, it's going to be moved into during the week. Um... Or BUSR, it's going to be for the Rally Championship, where last week I ended up finishing second place to, uh, I think it was, I think it was Lou. Um, that was about a minute, the gap. Might have been third, because I think it's all flotation device up there as well. But wow, I, I couldn't get the place in the RGT. This week is R2s in Australia. Australia last season was quite interesting for me. Lots of punches, but that was in the R5. The R2 might be different. Um, in addition to that, we've got one in RSRBR, Wales Rally GB, which is also going to be entertaining. We've got Assetto Corsa, uh, BUSR on Wednesday. We've got the World Rallycross event on Thursday. That is Latvia. So those are all going to be a lot of fun. At the same time, in terms of video content, because the major event is going to be F1 at Imola, uh, the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix, I'm going to be talking about that, and the races and protest um, at some point. There's also going to be a song of the week on Saturday. But yeah, without further ado, let's get into talk about my main topic for this week, which is Max Verstappen. Because in free practice one, he collided with Lance Stroll and used two slurs. They could be considered ableist. Um, bit of a kind of warning if anybody does want to hear ableist language. I'm not going to be naming one of them. You can find both of them in the full quote in the description below. Because the director of an organisation called Mongol Identity has written to Max Verstappen and asked for a public apology. Because Max said he didn't really care about the connotations about this stuff. Um, one of the words that was used was uh, Mongol which is supposed to have connotations which are ableist um, to do with um, the description that was given to people who nowadays are given the diagnosis of Down syndrome. But yeah, um, it's horrible. And the fact that he won't apologise is bad. This happens one of the drivers who still chooses not to kneel during the end races and protest. So the fact that he does comments like these and then goes, I won't apologise, it puts him, in my mind, in a similar kind of league to Carlos Sainz, who had made the joke that definitely comes across as and could be considered racist about um, eating at a restaurant in China. It's, for me, now at a relatively similar level. And I'm not somebody who calls the cancelling of F1 drivers. Um, this does not go against any kind of thing to do with Max's pace or record. Um, he's still a fast driver. The fact that he's able to get into third places with the kind of car that he's got is pretty good, especially on a kind of consistent basis. And I know it is second best to Mercedes, but... He still is one of the best drivers out there, but that doesn't mean he's been a particularly great person. What he's done there is horrible, and the fact that he won't want to be held to account to it isn't good when he's supposed to be a role model, because he's the next generation of F1 drivers. And, like, it makes me even more grateful that we've got drivers like um, Lewis Hamilton and Sebastian Vettel right now, who are more likely to say something. Daniel Ricciardo. As well, I could speak up, say something, do something. I've said lots of things about Verstappen in the past. I think um, the only active politician he follows on Twitter is um, Geert Wilders, which says a bit as well. Um, It's really disappointing for me because, like, I mean, yesterday's F1 and racism video that I did, I had pre-recorded. I didn't expect that uh, Daniel Kvyat wasn't going to be there because I think it was Kvyat that wasn't there. But everything else I said, still basically predictions came true. 
F1 doesn't really erase this one. The re this one message is still so ambiguous with so few, if any, kind of like clear-cut aims or objectives or goals. It's abysmal. And the fact that they could appoint Vitaly Petrov as a steward, of course, he didn't end up being a steward because of the death of his father. At the same time, they're saying, oh, no, we erased this one. Oh, we're going to look at having a race in Saudi Arabia next year. But it's fine, we've got the rainbows in the car. We raised this one. Just don't say that, you know, the rainbow is a connotation of the LGBT plus community. Because you know what? It's not a connotation of the LGBT plus community. We're saying thank you to key workers. Because we raised this one. It's the ten colours of the teams. What do you mean it's also quite similar to the progress fly flag? No, it's we raised this one. What do you mean we announced it in Pride Month? No, it's we raised this one. And, you know, we've got the end racism pledge. People have it on their shirts. Carlos Sainz says he's committed to fight against racism in the video. Kimi Raikkonen says, I stand. We racist one. Yes. What do you mean it's not an initiative with any kind of tangible goals yet? And we've always said this. Oh, somebody's committed a lot of money to it. We racist one. Honestly, like, I know I sit here as a middle class white guy with university degree but myself as a member of the LGBT plus community that's horrible F1 races in Russia races in Hungary is racing this season in Turkey is also going to have races in the UAE in Bahrain and is looking at expanding into Saudi Arabia at the same time as Aramco has been becoming a major sponsor in F1 as well as F1 saying, oh, we need to be more renewable and we need to have like less oil and so on. Yeah. It's fine though, because we race as one. But yeah. Stappen definitely has to apologise. He needs to be better, he needs to do better. So does F1. The fact that you have seven drivers uh, who still decide not to kneel and that they get praise and Lewis Hamilton gets slated for it. It doesn't look good. I mean, it doesn't look good for the fans attacking Lewis Hamilton because there's not, in my eyes, really any reason to. Like, yeah, he's saying police brutality is bad. Racism is bad. He's... One of the few drivers who's going to be more outspoken about the problems. Him, Daniel Ricciardo. Maybe at the same time people like Sebastian Vettel. It does make me worry what kind of um, impressions this next generation of F1 drivers, you Leclerc, you Verstappen, Sciences, what kind of impression they're going to be leaving on young people. I can say this. Lewis and Seb have both been massively positive role models. And they've especially matured into a kind of role like that over the past couple of years. But I don't think a Verstappen or a Leclerc would do that. I can worry even Lando won't do that now. They're more relatable. That much is for sure. They've managed to get the social media game to work so well for them. And the streaming as well makes it more accessible for a younger audience. But they still have a bit of maturing left to do. I can say this, I'm roughly their age. Lando's younger than me. Max is a couple of years older than me. Stroll's about my age as well. They still have more work they need to do. And given that I've talked about this for so long in the video, um, I'm going to leave you be for the rest of the day now. Largely because I want to make sure I get this edited and out in time for midnight because, well, this is my first chance I get to record General Notice on a Monday. And, yeah, it's late. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and for joining. And I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.